Give it up for the worship. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know about you, but I'm excited today. Why don't you go ahead and give your neighbor a high five and tell him you made it. Amen. Happy New Year once again for those of you who weren't here last week. Amen. We want to wish you a Happy New Year once again. Amen. How many of us are excited? Amen. I don't know about you, but that's where it's at, the worship, amen. When we get to heaven, better get used to it, because that's what you're going to be doing, amen. Day and night, night and day, amen, all for the glory of God. So give them one more big hand clap, amen, hallelujah. We're going to go ahead and open up the service and dedicate it unto the Lord. If you can just join me in prayer and lift up one hand and two hands, hallelujah, one without wrath and one without doubt. Father God, we just thank you, Lord God, for gathering us here. God, one more day, God, for everything that you do, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, for every single man, woman, and child, Lord God, that is here, Lord God, in your presence, Lord God, that you, Father God, would remove, Lord God, strongholds, Lord God, that you would break every chain of addiction, Lord God, that you would break yokes, Lord God, hallelujah, and that your spirit, Lord God, would be felt, Lord God. We come here today, Lord God, seeking you, Lord God, in every area of our lives, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, that you penetrate our hearts, God. Help us, Lord God, to understand, Lord God, what you are doing, Lord God, into this new year, Lord God. Give us, Father God, a blessing, Father God, that flows from heaven, Lord God. Let your anointing, Lord God, outpour, Lord God, in every single heart, every vessel, Lord God, as we come here to give you all the praise and the glory in Jesus' mighty name, living where family says amen and amen. Give it up for Jesus one more time. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. How many of us are excited? Amen. Man, we got a packed house, man. Uh, I believe in me, this year is going to be a year for increase. So tell your neighbor, get ready for increase. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So let's get ready for the next part of this service as we call up Brother Freddie for the announcements. Amen. Come on, church. Give him a big hand clap. Hallelujah. Amen, church. You all may be seated in the presence of the Lord today. Amen. Awesome uh, presence of the Lord today on the first um, Sunday of the year. Who's excited to be in the house of God? Amen. Uh, very awesome. Let's start this uh, year off right, you know, and just get closer to God this year. And um, we have a few, a uh, few announcements. Our first announcement: we could all put our Phones on silent or vibrate, please. We do not want to be interrupted by the awesome message our pastor has in store for us today. And uh, another announcement, if you see the reserved parking spaces, please do not park there. And if you do, there will be a little announcement on the screen. Um, do we have any uh, women today in the house? Amen. Come on, everyone. Let's give a hand clap for the, for the women of God here. You know, um, on January 12th, mark your calendars, ladies, there's going to be a ladies' night. And um, we're, we're, all the ladies are going to get together. There's going to be fellowship. And um, I believe they're going to go somewhere to eat. It's a really good place. Amen. Anthony, you can't go. So <laughs> I know Lauren, goes, my, my sister, um, brought me there a few times. Really good food. There's going to be fellowship. And, you know, <clears throat> the ladies, the women of God are very important in our life. You know, it's, it's their, they're the foundation of the um of the church, they lift up the, the men of God in our life. We're grateful for our pastors, you know, and and they just do such um, wonderful, awesome things when they get together and have that fellowship. So let's give another hand clap for all the, the women of God here. Amen. And uh, we want to keep on inviting people to our Wednesday night service. You know, it was a little light the past Wednesday, but, you know, uh, just we want to pack this place out. Our pastor is always... Um, Oh, there's a sign-up sheet, too, for the women in the back. I'm sorry. We all have to sign up just to have reservations and so that we could all be prepared. And Or if you have any questions, you can get with Pastora. And, yeah, we want to keep inviting people out on Wednesday nights. And, you know, our pastor always has a wonderful message for us, and we just want to show him our support and our gratitude. And and we need that, that word of God each and every day, you know. And um, just keep on inviting people out wherever you're at, and come on, let's get excited today, too, <laughs> amen, and um, there's going to be, after service, there's going to be fellowship, 
If there's any um, new new members today, welcome and get to know one another. Say say hi, say bless and meet another, um, one another, and we're all great, grateful to have you here. You know. So, with that being said, time to get ready for the most important part of the service: the tithes and offerings with Brother Anthony. Amen. How's everyone doing today, church? Blessed. Blessed. Amen. We're about to get back to the Lord. Who's ready to get back to the Lord? Amen. Amen. Like Freddie says, the first Sunday service of the year. Amen. Let's start it off good. Amen. Now, uh, before we get started, we'd like to call our ushers up. And church, we have our three ways to give today. And that first way to give is through our Zelle app. That number is 909-303-0291. And if you'd like to write a check out to Living Word Upland, you may. And we have through our tithing envelope, just to show a hand if anybody needs a tithing envelope today. Amen. Okay, let's jump into scripture. Before we do, can we just tell our neighbor, giving is good. Giving is good. Giving is good. Amen? Amen? Amen. Now, the scripture for us today is right here off of 2 Corinthians chapter 9, and it says right here, Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give. Not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. 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 We know that's where it comes down to. God loves a cheerful giver. It says right here in Scripture, and we know that. Amen. We know that God is a cheerful giver every single day. Amen. Sometimes we take it for granted, but um, you no, know, like we were saying, we're starting off a new year, and I want to start this year off good. Amen. Amen. And on, our giving and giving is good. You know. And um, what inspired me for this scripture, I, I've seen a story of this man. Um, bear with me. I've seen this story. Have you guys probably seen this story. It's about the lemon tree. Has anybody heard it? No? Yeah. All right, check it out. All right, this man, uh, he grew a lemon tree, right? And he grew a few lemons. But with this lemon tree at his church, he, he got the best lemon on this tree, right? He shined it up and, and he put it in the gift basket. He was very secretive with the, he put it in the gift basket, you know. And um, uh, a year after, this tree didn't grow regular lemons, amen. This tree grew bowling ball lemons, <laughs> I swear. And it, he was saying, he was, it was, this was his testimony. It was so powerful. It was so real, amen. It, this is what God does, you know. When we give him that tent, when we are so giving with that tent and so real with that tent with him he blesses us amen god's a giver beyond giving amen and we got to remember that you know we got to give in faith and we give to it hurts amen because there's nothing we could give god that he can't give more amen our god is good amen and he blesses with another year he i know i i say it with authority i say it through faith that god has bigger things for us this year and it takes us uh it takes us church amen so let's get to the Lord today, amen? Amen. amen. But before we do, let's uh, show the Lord reverence right now. Pray over the tithes and offerings. Dear Father God, my Lord, we thank you for another day, my Lord. My God, we ask that you just bless this gathering, my God. My God, we thank you for this breath in our lungs, my God, everything that we have, my God. Your provision, my God, is always faithful, my God. So we thank you, my God. As you prepare this year, my God, my Lord, we ask that you teach us to give willingly, my God. We pray for revival in our giving, Lord Jesus, my God. My God, so we can move on to bigger things, my God, to move your kingdom, my God. My Lord, we thank you, Lord, once again for another day, my God. We ask that you bless every giver today, my God. My God, and everyone who don't give today, my God, we ask that you bless them to give double the next time, Lord Jesus, my God. My God, we ask that you cover their households, my Lord, and every, my God, oh, Lord Jesus, my God, we love you, Lord. Thank you, God, for another day once again. In Jesus' name, our church says amen and amen.
Amen. Amen. Now, as the elements. Just one second. All righty. Now as the elements are being passed out, thank you, sir. Thank you, my friend. Okay, church. Now as the elements are being passed out, um, just like to remind everyone once again, that every first Sunday of the month, we get together, not only as a church, but as a ministry. Amen? And we uh, get together to do communion in remembrance of what, uh, what Jesus did. Amen? Amen? Amen. And uh, we got to remember, this is not only something we do at church. We can do it at our home. We can do it at Denny's. You know, invite the people next to you to join you in communion. Amen? Because... Every day is a gift from God, and it's only because of Jesus he opened the gates of heaven that he made a way. Amen. Someone say, he made a way. He made a way. Amen. Now, we know our God, our God, Jesus, he humbled himself. Just a little breakdown. He humbled himself. He left his kingdom, the kingdom of peace, amen, to come down and deal with us, to deal with us, the unrighteous man, woman, amen. For those of you holy rollers, amen, you know, and... uh. He came to show the way. Not only that, he came to heal the, heal the sick, give sight to the blind, amen? And still he dealt with people talking down on him. But still he showed the way. He was so, he's so faithful, amen? amen? He is so faithful and he's so real. He's so good to us, amen? Every single day. Amen. And you know, it wasn't that cross that he went, that he endured, amen? We should hold that cross, amen? We, should, we deserve that beating, it wasn't him, but we thank Jesus every single day for that. Amen? Amen. 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 Now, before I get into scripture, just want, uh, has everyone got their elements? Yes. Amen? Yes. Amen. Now, let's get into scripture. It says right here, so then, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink from the cup. And right now, we could take a minute just, or take a couple of seconds just to examine ourselves from un un unrighteousness. Amen. 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 Now, in the night Jesus was betrayed, it says right here, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And we may partake. Okay. Now on the same night, it says right here, in the same way, after supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. And we may partake. Father God, my Lord, we thank you for sending your son, my God, who was so faithful, my God, and during the cross for us, my God. We thank you for your blood shedding, my God. My God, we thank you for opening the gates of heaven and spending eternity with the Father, my God. We thank you for making a way, my God. Let us do this in remembrance of you. We love you. We thank you. In Jesus' my name, our church says amen, amen and amen. amen. Okay. 
testing. Hallelujah. Let's give it up for Jesus. Oh, come on. Let's get excited for the Lord. Amen. You know, this Bible says when two or more are gathered, the Lord's in the midst. So, you know, he's in the midst today. I don't know about you, but right now, just give your neighbor a high five and just tell him you're in a good place. Amen. Let your other neighbor know, too. So are you. Amen. So they don't feel left out. But right now, right before we get started with service, I do have a prayer request. And it's for one of our family members, Jonathan he lost his son in a car accident, and we want to continue to pray for the family. You know, um, you know, we want to continue to pray for the Alanises and lift them up in prayer, you know, because, you know, sometimes when tragedy comes like that, we don't know when it's going to come. And, you know, even for the family that are left behind here, you know, still to understand that, you know, our hope's still up in heaven. But right now we're going to go ahead and dismiss our children before we do the prayer. After we do the, go ahead, the children could go into their class. And uh, we're going to go ahead and just come in one mind and one accord. And maybe you have a prayer request that needs or maybe even a family member that we can stand in the gap for them, you know, and just to lift up that prayer. Amen. And uh, if you can all join me, if we all bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, today, Father God, for your presence, Father God, in this house, Lord. We pray, Father God, lifting up the Alanese's family, Father God. We lift up Jonathan to you, Father God, the father of his son, Father God. But also, Lord, that we know, Lord, that, you know, little Jonathan is up there with you, Father God. But we pray, Father God, over the family, Father God. You know, everything that happened, Lord, for comfort, Father God, peace, Lord, that we know, Lord, that it only comes from you, Lord Jesus. We also lift up prayer requests, Father God, that we have of our own today, Lord, that you know, Lord, what the prayer requests are, Father God. You know our hearts already as it is, Lord. But today, Father God, we come in agreement, Father God, believing trusting lord and always giving you the glory and honor in jesus name the church says amen. amen and amen and let's just give a clap offering to the lord and you may be seated in the presence of the lord how many are excited today amen so am i hallelujah amen so, oh, come on, let's get excited for the Lord. Hey, I always love a full house. You know, I, I don't want to let you guys go, so we're going to be here for a couple hours, okay? <laughs> hello, hello, somebody. Hey, tell, tell your neighbor, God is good. God is good. No matter how long it takes, amen, because we're going to be praising God up in heaven, and if you can't do it now with uh, brothers and sisters here, well, maybe you're not going to heaven. Let it, let it marinate. It tastes better, right? But you know what? I had two ways that I was going with this sermon. You know, you always have the pastor's way, right? But last night I heard the founder's way. Our pastor Ruben Reyna, the founder of Living Word. And it was very powerful even just to sit there and listen. So, you know, I'm going to kind of do a mixed way. Tell your neighbor, a mixed way is always good. But you know what? What he was talking about yesterday was very, very, how would you say, powerful and really wanting to open up our eyes. Because we under, have to understand in the times that we're in right now. And if we don't open up our eyes, some of us are still asleep. And if you're asleep, the Bible talks about that we won't enter into what's coming next okay so understanding this that as children of God we really have to open up our eyes to see what God is doing could I get an amen, amen. so if you have your Bibles and you can turn with me to Luke chapter 21 and we're going to go to 25 to 28 and then we're going to go 34, we're going to jump to 34 to 36. And you know, what he was referring to, God, you know, Pastor Ruben Reyna was talking about, are you awake? Because the times are near. 
And there, in other words, there's not going to be no way to escape that. And it, it kind of brings where he talked about that we should have fear of the Lord. If we don't fear the Lord, then are we really worried about what's going to come in the coming? If you go here to Luke chapter 25. No, 21 verse 25. Sorry about that. It says, there will be signs in the sun, moon and stars on the earth. Nations will be in anguish and perplexity at the roaring and tossing of the sea. People will faint from terror, apprehensive of what is coming on the world. For the heavenly bodies will be shaken. And at the time they will see the son of, the, of man coming in a cloud with the power and great glory. When these things begin to take place. Tell your neighbor here, stand up and lift up your heads. Because your redemption is drawing near. Now let's go to 34. The word of God reads on chapter or verse 34, be careful. Tell your neighbor, be careful of your hearts will be weighed down with corrosion, drunkenness and anxieties of life. That day will close on you and suddenly tell your neighbor like a trap for it will come in all those who live on the face of the whole earth. Be always on watch and pray you may be able to escape all that is about to happen and that you may be able to stand before the Son of Man. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, today, Father God. For your presence, Father God, here at Living Word of Upland, Father God. We pray, Father God, that you continue to move by your spirit, Father God. Let us open up our hearts, Father God. Let us be able to attain your word, being ministered today, Lord. But always, Lord Jesus, giving you the praise, the honor, and the mighty glory. In Jesus' name we say, amen, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Give your neighbor another high five. Tell your neighbor you got set up today. If someone brought you today, hallelujah, praise God. There was a reason because I believe that God is beginning to pour out his spirit to all the ones who love him. Amen. And it, many of us are still kind of walking sleepless, you know, and, and not understanding what our true word of God means. Because the Bible says that we need to learn to walk in his ways. Could I get an amen? amen? It says walk in his ways, not in our own ways. But right now, as we talk about the portion of scripture, it says that we are seeing changes. You know, if you don't see anything changing from the maybe the generation that you were at before when you were growing up then you better get closer to God. Could I get an amen? amen? Because there's so many things going on in this world right now that you know that the time is near. You know, you start seeing like all these waves that are coming in, all these tsunamis that they're saying that these are more than that it's unheard of. But they're happening. It's the signs that God will begin to show us. Could I get an amen? amen. I, I think we should keep the door open because so we can let some air flow through here, please. So we are seeing changes in the world. But at the same time, God is warning us. Tell your neighbor, he's warning us. Because at the same time, we have to understand that many of us are probably not having fear towards the Lord. You see, when you fear God, that should be one of the main things. Tell your neighbor it's the main thing. Let's go to Psalms so we can read it on 34.9. In Psalms 34.9, and we're going to read it at 16, it says, Fear the Lord, you his holy people. For those who fear him lack nothing. The lions may grow weak 
and hungry, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Come, my children, he says, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Whoever of you loves life, listen to this part, and desires to see many good days, keep your tongue from evil and your lips from telling lies. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous. And his ears are attentive to their cry. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil to blot their names out from the earth. Could I get an amen? Amen. So right here, it's a warning of telling us that we should fear God. And if we fear God, that means if you're a man or woman of God, of course, we need to be walking in the things of God. Could I get an amen? Amen. But some of us are still asleep. Tell your neighbor, are you weak? You look kind of like you got Chino eyes right now. Amen. (laughs) Let me ask you something here. How many want to see your children saved? How many want to see your grandchildren saved? How many want to see you saved? All right, then you better get them chino eyes out of here, amen? Because you got to understand that we want to see, but the Bible that Jesus is telling us that Jesus is coming back, the Bible describes that Jesus is going to come back like a thief in the night. That means that you're not going to be knowing when he's going to come. You know what a thief is, right? Like the way you used to be. Amen. Amen. Hello, somebody. Everybody got all quiet. What's a thief? Amen. (laughs) Just remember back when you were unsaved. You know, you know, you used to go get the chocolates or whatever. Amen. Amen. But the Bible describes that Jesus is coming back like a thief in the night. We're not going to know. It's going to be a sudden thing where you're going to be like, oh, my God. But that time, it's going to be too late. Tell your neighbor, it's time to check yourself. Look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. For you know very well that that day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying peace and safety Destruction will come on them suddenly as labor pains on a pregnant woman and they will not escape. That's scary. Because again, you know, Pastor Ruben Reyna was talking about it's like a snare that's coming. People are on that snare of a trap. But it's coming. And if we're not awake and we're not alert, we're getting caught up in that snare. And we say that we want the things of God, but we don't walk the way we should be walking with God. In other words, we need to be walking aligned with the spirit of God. You know, they talked about the seven day revival at Pastor Edgy's. It was talking about. Being anointed, amen. Having God's favor in your life, amen. Could I get an amen? How many want God's favor in your life? How many want to be anointed by God? How many want to walk with God, amen? Hallelujah. If you didn't raise your hand, then I'll walk for you then. And if you're not going where I'm going, I want double anointing. I want all the things that are going to come. But we need to learn to be with walking by God. We need to be walking by his spirit. Amen. In other words, we need to be walking as children of the light and get out of being children of the darkness. How many knows it's easy to walk as children in the darkness? What were you doing last night? It's funny because, you know, hey, maybe I was doing something I shouldn't be doing. Amen. Watching a movie, then that's good. What movie were you watching? Was it a Jesus movie? Pastor Ruben was talking about that one of his friends said, 
that there were, he had a, a dream that the rapture came and that he was going up. And then out of a sudden, he got stuck by a chain on his leg. And you know what was keeping him? The TV set. I don't know. You want to watch TV now? Amen. But that's what was keeping it. it, it it's, we're in a world right now that, that there's so much deceivement. There's so much even for our young youth, you know, that I'm glad that they're here, our young people, because, hey, man, those are the ones that give us life, that they're here to, to be able to, to take it into another level. Amen? Amen. You know, they're the ones that are going to pay even more of a price in the generation because every generation is getting lukewarm. Could I get an Amen. amen. So tell your neighbor, we need to be, as, as, as men and women of God, we need to be walking in the light. You see, when we're not walking with the Lord, you are not walking alive. Tell your neighbor, you're a dead man or a dead woman walking. If you're not walking with God, and you're just, you're a dead man or dead woman walking. Who wants to be alive? Amen. You see, but look at this. When you know you have the Lord, you know you're a good man. Hello, somebody. But you have not been reborn. You are still a dead man walking. Have you ever heard the people say, well, I'm a good person? See, don't lie. You still have dirty chonies on you. Amen. Ain't nothing righteous about you. The Bible clearly states. You're already lying. Hello, somebody, but I'm a good person. Let me cut you off on the freeway and let's see how good you are. Amen. You know, everybody gets in the flesh. Oh, no, they didn't. Amen. Watch. Let me, let me put on the brakes right now. Slow them down. Brake check. You see, but when you have the Lord... And you say you're a good man, but you have not been reborn or you have not really fully given your life to God. You're still a dead man walking. Because the Bible tells us that, hey, it's either you're going to go up or down. Tell your neighbor, you got set up today. Amen. You can't say, hey, pastor didn't ever teach me that. Well, you heard it today. Amen. And if you're not listening, I'm making sure you're listening. Okay. So that way. You got set up. Tell your neighbor, getting set up is good. And if you're watching online, don't try to change the channel. Hello, somebody. We know who's watching. You see, some of us, we need some water in us. Amen. Tell your neighbor, holy water. Someone said, well, pastor said, let me go get some wine or something. And hello, somebody, some moonshine. No, you need water. Meaning, in the Bible, it means life of the living word. Amen. It means spiritual power. It means cleansingness. Could I get an amen? amen? But then again, as children of God, we need to be thirsty for it. If you're not thirsty for the things of God, then you're, of course, you're never going to grab it. And you're probably not going to make it. You know, I was sharing with my brother right now in the office. Let me ask right now, and I'm going to just put it out there. How many have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Any hands if they didn't go up? That you don't know God, then hallelujah. Because the Bible gives us two directions. The Bible says you could either be cold or you can be hot. But if you're lukewarm, I'm going to vomit you out of my mouth. Meaning that if you accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, that means you only have two options now. You're either hot or you're warm. You can't be cold no more. Coldness comes to the unbeliever that never believed in God, never wanted to believe in God. That's what he's talking about. Be cold and stay cold. 
But when you're lukewarm, it's a, a Christian that says, well, yeah, I'm a believer, but I still do what I want to do. No, that's lukewarmness. The Bible warns us about that. That's why the fear of the Lord should be one of the main things. Because why? I want my children saved. I want my family saved. But if I'm not right and I'm not right walking in the things of God, then there's something wrong with me. And I better get it right. Hallelujah. Thank God for the home. Amen. That we have the home. Because, hey, if you need to come in the home, believe me, it gets strict there. Hello, somebody. I'm homegrown. Say, man. But look what happens. See, when you're thirsty for God, it's going to make sense to you of what Jesus Christ did on the cross of Calvary for you. He paid for our sins. He bought us through the blood. Amen. And that's for those who accept them, understanding that, hey, I've been bought by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Because what he did, not what I did, I deserve to be on that cross. But because he paid a price for us, amen, we have to understand that we've been bought now so we can have a relationship with God now, amen. Not meaning of what we do, but what he did on that cross of Calvary. Could I get an amen? amen. But you have to have that thirst. If you're not thirsty, man, you're going to die. If you're not thirsty for the word of God, if you're not thirsty to wanting to come to church, I don't know about you, but I don't want nobody taking my seat. That's why I get here early. But many times we don't want to come to church. Oh, my God. Here we go again. Pastor's going to talk on the pulpit. Amen. Y'all at us. Hey, I'm just trying to help you. That's it. Amen. I don't hang from the chandeliers, but I believe in all the fruits of the Spirit. Amen. But I know that my God is a God that I love. Amen. Because I know that He loves me. I know that He protects me. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm not going to want to trade that in for anything else. Could I get an amen? amen? But what happens? The power is in the blood. The power in the blood is for the past presence and our future could i get an amen? amen but then again we can say we're a good man or a good woman but we're inactive you know being inactive what it means you're still dead you're still dead who wants to be a dead christian who wants to be an alive Christian? Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm at the right church today. Amen. So we understand that being inactive means we're inactive in the spirit of God. We can say we believe in God. But we can be inactive. And, you know, some of us start off good. Tell your neighbor, some of you, yeah, you, you were real good at the beginning. Some of us are like, boom, vamonos. But then what happens? Start coming inactive. Start getting comfortable. Start getting comfortable like, yeah, this is, uh, well, just do it this way, amen. Only going to give this much in. But what happens is, some of you fall asleep. Look at Samson. He fell asleep. And you know the story of Delilah, right? Yeah. Wanted his greñas because that's where the anointing came, right? <laughs> like my wife wanted mine, amen, but I, she's still mine. Hallelujah. <laughs> but Samson, he fell asleep. Delilah wanted his hair because he knew that he had no power if his hair was cut off. <clears throat> Remember Samson? Was a handsome guy like me. Hello, somebody. <laughs> he was a handsome. He was anointed by God. But then he started getting big headed. See, I got this. A lot of us do. And we get ensnared. We think we have it, but in reality, do we? 
we become inactive. Samson fell asleep. He was anointed. But afterwards, remember this, that God will take his hand off of you. He loves you. The Bible says, let God's will be done. Not our will. God's will. When we walk away from God and not align ourselves with them, then we're doing our own thing again. We know where his presence is. It's in his house. Because many of us can go into our own homes and we can say that the presence of God is not there. Just look how your home is being ran. So we come to the house of God to get fed. To understand. To build our house. To understand because what it, uh, I believe it was in Isaiah where he says, me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Could I get an amen? amen? In other words, get rid of all of the shenanigans that are in there. I heard Pastor Ruben preaching. He was talking about the grandmas. The prayer warriors. Hello, somebody. The grandmas are prayer warriors. Amen. Amen. And then this is what Pastor Ruben said. I was laughing on it. He said that he went to the old grandma. He didn't even know, but this is when he first was there doing the work of God. He said, hey, wait a minute, Pastor. Don't come in here yet. Let me grab the broom. And he's, he says she's sweeping. And he's like wondering like, you know, what's going on? But he said, no, 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 hold up. Let me clean up this whole house real fast. Because he goes, I don't want anything that is not of God to get on you. Amen. They knew that there were the prayer warriors. Abuelitas are our prayer warriors right now. Could I get an amen? amen. Grandpas, grandmothers. But it's the parents now, too, that need to be those prayer warriors. Amen. So Samson, again, fell asleep. God allowed the Philistines to get him because of all the sins he started doing. But how many of us know that we serve a God of many chances? We serve a God of first, second, third, fourth chances. God says, my son, my daughter, I just want you to open up your eyes. I'm not going to give up on you. Don't worry. I just want you to open up your eyes, your spiritual eyes. I have a plan, a purpose for your life. You're not going to be the same. There's going to be a transformation in your life, but it has to be in me. Could I get an amen? I'll tell your neighbor, it's good stuff. In other words, God's not going to give up on you. You know, you backsliders that always want to run from God. He's not going to give up on you. Do you ever feel like when you backslide, you get tormented even more? Tell your neighbor, he's really talking to you right now, hey, man. <laughs> I don't even try to hide it, hey. He's talking to you right now. You just try to run, but it seems like nothing is ever happening good. Because why? God still has his hand on you. You're his. Stop trying to run. In other words, God ain't giving up. Why you should give up? God is just trying to get a hold of you amen. to open up your big eyes, amen, and see, oh, my God, the trees are green. <laughs> Remember, our Lord forgives today, tomorrow, and yesterday. Amen. He says, I want to do a fresh start in your life, a new thing, something new. Who wants the newness? 2024. <laughs> Hallelujah. How many want the increase? Well, here, I'm going to just share something with you. We've seen a building. It maybe fits about 200 people in it. But you want to hear the good news? It's going to take you more of your finances so we can get that building. Can I get an amen? Hello, somebody. 
Better go start selling street tacos, whatever. We got a couple taco carts I can get. Anthony, how was that building? If we wish to get it. It's nice. It's not too far from here. It's maybe like two blocks away. Two big blocks. But if it's in a little Rancho Cucamonga, but hey, call it Rancho Cucamonga. Keep it in prayer, church. Fast. We're going to be fasting. And whatever God is going to open it, if it's not that one, at least we know now. Hallelujah. There's something good. Remember, God forgives today, tomorrow, and yesterday. You know, we're talking about the times, church. Donald Trump said the rapture is coming. Even Elon Musk said that it's coming. You know, I heard Pastor Ruben talking about the chip. That they're putting it in their brain and they're putting it in their hand, the right hand in London already. The Bible in Revelations 17, I believe it's 517. I got to look it up, but it talks about it already. That it's going to be in the right hand, but that's when you sell your soul. And that's it. But in order for you to get anything... It's going to be through that chip. And it's already going on. I, I was tripping out on Elon Musk had these robots that are kind of taking over to do everything that any human can do. And even smarter than us. Hello, somebody. That's scary. That's like, 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 man. Even though we're going to have to go on the underground, amen? Hey, well, I got some, some papas over here. Hey, the, Prima, are you growing carrots over there at your house? Okay, I'll get carrots over there. We get, you know, hey, I got a little cow, but we can't kill it because that's where our milk comes from. <laughs> you got to turn vegan. Hello, somebody. Hey, hello, where are my vegan people? Hey, I, I want to try it, amen? It's good for you. That way I'm ready, amen, if it comes down, you know, growing. But we got to think about it. Amen. You see, some people are seeing, I don't know if you heard, that they're starting to see aliens more now. Yeah. Aliens, hello. <laughs> ETs. The Bible, again, there will be signs in the sun, moon, and stars and on the earth. There's a lot of signs going on. We are seeing earthquakes that are shaking the ground. We're starting to see big, big guys start crying now. Hello, somebody. Yeah, I cry once in a while, okay? You see, the wrath is coming, but God still has mercy upon his people. God will give you a warning if you are awake. And this will put fear in my life again. How many want to be saved today? <coughs> Hallelujah. You better be at church then. On Remember, we have Wednesday night service too. For those that don't know, hello, somebody. Been here like 10 years. Oh, we have Wednesday nights, Pastor? We didn't know. Yeah, you're never here. Hey, if you're not working, make, a, make your attempt. I, I, I mean, I'm not, I don't want to be left out. As a matter of fact, on Wednesday nights is when we have, uh, what is it? We have food, we have sandwiches, carne asada. <laughs> and then you guys show up. Hey, where's the food at? Didn't pastor say that? Oh, yeah, today wasn't the day we are doing that. <laughs> huh? It's in the Wednesday night radicals come out, amen. We, we're like all radical out, amen. But I'm going to just give you one point. I didn't even get to do mine. I, I stayed on this. In Revelations 15, 7, it's where he takes notice of everything. That it gives us the warning that Jesus is coming back. 
The wrath is coming, but God has mercy upon his people. But this should put a, a, a fear of fearing the Lord, of wanting to walk right. You know, Pastor Ruben says, we're going to have a living word section up in heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to be saying, come on in. We got it. Come on, living word. Yeah, yeah. We're back here. Got this big section. Church, there's so much revival happening right now that if you're not in it, you're not going to be revived. There's so much revival taking place in all our living words. You just see the spirit of God moving. This uh, seven day uh, revival that was at Pastor Edgy's, man, powerful, packed. <clears throat> Every day. There's just so much revival. And remember, when God is coming back for the church, He's not going to take the building, <clears throat> He's going to take the souls that belong to Him in the building. That's what He's going to take. When he talks about the church, he's talking about you and I is the church. It's not the building. Yeah, we need a bigger building to grow for his coming because that's what he's taking back with him. Could I get an amen? amen. In other words, we have to, number one, is to stay alert. We have to wake up. And stay alert. Because also the enemy comes down like a roaring lion. Seeing who he can devour. Many of you. Are no. How would you say it? You guys are no competition towards the enemy. Not even me. The enemy has been crafty from the beginning of Adam and Eve. He's more craftier than us. If you thought you were slick, the enemy's slicker. Especially when he can just do something in your life that you get stuck on it. And the one is you get stuck on, you know that term, stupid, amen? Hello, somebody, right? He can put just, oh, get you in the flesh to get doing what you used to do. And that's it. That's all it took. Look, look at this one. I just got to do this. Put a frajo in his mouth. Put a glass of wine in his at dinner time. Put a beer. Hello, somebody. Then put some clavo in there. Then do, hey, hallelujah. And then you're all out. And then I get the phone call. Hello? Uh, Sorry, we're, uh, if you would like to accept call from a uh, correctional officer, please, uh, will you press one and, uh, and accept? Beep. You can leave your message after the tone. No, I just play. <laughs> I get calls all the time from prisoners, my family members, you know, men, they've been in the home. They always call me. And you know what? To be able to share the love of God with them, I always do. Because it doesn't matter, you know, where we're at. But it just shows, you know, that they know. And a lot of them, some of them get a lot of years, you know, but they still call. And they just want to get right now. But you know how that goes. We tell them, okay, well, you're going to go in the home. Everything goes. And sh as soon as they taste freedom, the enemy ensnares them again. But there has to be that one day that the enemy ain't going to be able to ensnare because it's going to take us to be right. So that way they know that, hey, man, if he did it, why can't I? Amen. Let's give it up for the Lord. Amen. When you stay alert, you become a testimony to be able to share the good news that God has done in your life. When you stay alert, when the time of redemption, when the time of the rapture comes, you'll be able to bring out your fishing poles and start fishing out for men and women of God. Could I get an amen? amen. You see? 
If we can all stand this morning. Church, I really believe that the Lord's talking to a lot of us here today. I really believe 2024 should be different of what happened in 2023. You know, if you had a good 2023, hallelujah, praise God. Well, 2024 is even going to be better. If you had struggles in 2023, 